hello everybody. This is Nick from TBT, www.airriflechuning.com. Today I'm going to be doing a video about the Virarc HW35. Now, this rifle in particular I bought for doing 10 metre target shooting. You can see it comes with a diopter sight, it comes with interchangeable foresight elements. Um, it's a special offer I saw on. I thought, well, do you know what? I'm going to get one. Um, the HW35 itself has been made for many years. Uh, different incarnations, different variants. There are differences in the stroke and in the transfer port and in the piston length internally over those years, um, amongst other things. So I thought it would be good to have a video for customers to see so that if you're taking apart an HW35 and fit one of our um, HW35 maxi kits in, you can see how to, to fit it for your particular variant of the gun. So, this one also, because it's going to be used for 10 metre, is going to be detuned, or has been detuned in fact, six foot pounds. So I can use it for bell target and 10 metre. We'll go into how I've done that as well. When I got the gun originally, it is German spec, so it was shooting at 5.2, but it was shooting at 5.2 horribly. And we'll go through um, why it did that and how I fixed it. First things first, I'm going to take off the diopter, so that we don't damage that. Pop him over there. Now, when taking apart the 35, there are three points where the screws attach to the, uh, the stock to the action. Exactly the same as in a 99 or an HW50. So, we should take these off. Now, this is all going to be in real time. Talk amongst yourselves. I don't do editing. Or rather, I don't know how to do editing. If I'm more honest. But this way, a lot of customers have told me they actually have it playing while they're taking their own gun apart. It's not a race. But I often win. Different size screwdriver for the back one. trigger guard off and the stock comes away. Put that over there. I say about the uh, HW35 being made for many years, we're actually today making this film in the southwest of France. Not very far from Ruffignac, where the prehistoric cave is, where they've got 10,000 year old cave paintings on the walls. And in that, you can clearly see one of the Mark I HW35s being used on a woolly mammoth. So that's interesting. Right, next we're going to punch out the two pins that hold in the record trigger unit. Bosch. And French. Uh, da, da, da. Yeah. To take them all the way through. two pins into there. Now, hold down the safety catch while you remove the trigger. Put the trigger to one side and then pull out the safety catch complete with spring. If the spring isn't on it, it's still inside of the gun. Just use a magnetic screwdriver to remove it. Um, while I've got the trigger here, while I've got the trigger here, People often ask about adjusting triggers. Now, I don't like taking triggers apart. It's not my thing. My fitter, Andy Black Max, he is the guy I send my triggers to if I want them done properly. But for adjusting for myself, you can cock the trigger just by pushing down the top sear there into place. So it's now forward, okay, which is great because it means you can adjust the trigger to set out of the gun. In the back here, in the back circle, you can actually see the engagement between, you won't be able to see it from there, but the engagement between first and second stage. So as that pulls down, you can see the sear drop, see how much engagement there is there. And you can adjust this little screw here, which is a Torx or star drive of some sort, adjust that until it is just on the very cusp and then just the slightest movement after that releases it, like breaking glass, that's how you want it. And this one here is to adjust the trigger weight. You can't take it down to 
10 meter standard but you can make it very very nice to use and that really with a spring powered 10 meter rifle is it, it's about making it a joy to use and this this is so there's the trigger there now also in the trigger another thing to bear in mind there's a little m4 nut that sits in the back he falls out all of the time buy a bag of them you'll need them but that's there and that's the trigger next we want to remove the trigger block from the back say goodbye to the wood with new rifles hws this is invariably tight and the way to undo it is to have it trigger block to the right barrel to the left something that fits nicely into the recess put it onto a towel on a solid surface now we're not trying to twist this off we're not trying to encourage torsion into this all we're going to do is hold it down with one hand flat your hand just to stop it leaping off the table and then down and through on that that's moved it a bit a bit more there. okay so you can see that the thread has now been broken it will now unscrew as you get towards the ends of these threads it'll start to wobble and with experience you can start to feel and gauge how much preload there's going to be when you take the spring off but with this one I've already had it apart so I know there's none okay so that comes to one side and what we have in here is one of our genuine HW35 springs from the maxi kit but reduced by seven coils because I want it running at six foot pounds so that is a whole seven coils off of that one I'm just going to pop that to one side and now we'll take off the barrel uh, when you look at the barrel you'll see you've got the bolt running through here one side's the bolt and the other side's the nut by looking closely you can see which side's got the hole in it it's this one so we've got the nut on this side so the first thing you do is undo the nut side like so take out the locking washer as well and for the next part what we want to do is break the barrel to take off the pressure from the barrel bolt it's got a thumb catch on here which is different so we just break the barrel down like that, release the pressure off of the bolt, then he will undo quite easily. Locking washer, bolt, into your dish. Another part to watch out for is when you take the barrel off, you will have two little steel shims, one either side of the barrel. These are fragile, they're easy to damage. Watch other videos um, where I show you how to first of all tension the barrel correctly, but also how to use the lid of a big biro to insert these without damaging or, or marking them at all. Uh, there we go. Thumb catch just lifts off of there. It's a similar design through the tunnel, two piece jointed arm as on the HW99 and 50. So that pulls down like that, comes out of the chassis and pulls away. The HW35 can suffer from the galling issue that the HW50 and the HW99 gets, where this produces too much tension into the chassis of the gun. It's rarer, but it can happen. If yours is getting it, please watch the galling fix video on the website, the, the current of HW99, HW50 galling fix. Assist you with that, of course. Any questions come up at all, just email me. A lot of the things you can find the information somewhere on the website already. Now, we are left with the piston and the chassis of the gun. So we remove the piston, and there we are. There it is. Um, this one, as you can see, I've actually put a short stroke on it. If you watch the short stroking videos on the website, um, short stroking is a way we reduce power potential uh, to suit the power limit of your country or the power you want to achieve. It's no good just getting a magnum powered rifle and putting a weak spring in it because the piston travels so slowly to keep it legal. You can 
basically make a cup of tea between pulling the trigger and everything settling down. This is what's called hold sensitivity or lock, lock time which increases hold sensitivity. Um, by putting a short stroke on the front you reduce the amount of air being pushed out, you reduce the amount the piston travels and you reduce the potential power of the gun. It will still achieve good power but the potential has dropped. But in this one with the full spring it will do normally about 13 foot pounds something like that something in that region uh, in the modern ones but we want it at six so it's no good just running the piston slowly to achieve six it's it's not going to be a pleasant experience so we've reduced the swept volume by 12 millimeters with this so now the piston travels faster shorter distance with a stiff short spring and uh, we're getting a nice crisp six foot pounds out of it. Now we're going to get to the bits where we need to look at some of the older pistons and the older guns. If you've got a leather piston version of this gun then first of all people normally call me and say do I have the leather washers, do I have the leather piston seals? We don't, there are companies that do them but it is very rare you actually need a new one. They dry out over time, especially with misuse, not misuse, lack of use, or if they haven't been properly oiled. So to rejuvenate your leather piston seal, all you need to do is get a small saucer of Neats Foot Oil, which is a leather reconditioning oil or something similar, and just stand your piston in it, like that, for 24 hours. The piston leather will soak up the oil into it, rejuvenate it, puff it all out nicely and when you refit it it's going to splurt oil for the first few shots and it's going to diesel for a few shots but then it'll be fine it will last another 50 years so that's that you rarely rarely need a new leather piston seal the next thing is the piston length has changed over the years so our full length export spring here won't actually fit in some of the leather, leather piston seal guns or rather it'll fit in the gun but not at its full length it'll get coil bound that's where the, uh, the coils of the spring fully meet before it's actually cocked so you cock the gun and nothing happens and you'll be scratching your head wondering why what you need to do is put your slip washer and top hat into the piston and then we're going to measure from that part of the top hat there where the spring sits to the skirt of the piston okay so that's going to be usually between 85 and 95 millimeters depending on the age of your gun uh, once we've got that measurement in millimeters you divide that by 3.6 which is the gauge of the wire on the spring and that resulting number which is usually between 24 and 27 that will tell you exactly how many complete coils will fit inside of your spring uh, inside of your piston so if it comes out at 25 say when you do the calculation and you've got a spring that's 28 coils long you need to remove three coils from that spring so it'll fit also worth bearing in mind that the older guns the uh, leather piston guns they run best at around 10 foot pounds it's it's rarely worth trying to get much more than that out of them because they weren't designed to do that much more um, and, and and by running them trying to run them at more it can actually make them feel not as pleasant to shoot and really when you're talking about the older vintage ones it's it's well and with any air rifle really it's the pleasure of shooting you after powers powers kind of irrelevant when you're working with these kind of guns so anyway there we have it rebuild is the reverse of what we've just done we've covered the trigger we've covered measuring the spring the short stroking well that's for six meter uh, six foot pound sorry for for bell target or 10 meter or the german german or italian markets come to that um worth mentioning that the german scandinavian and norwegian national recoiling champions all use TBT short stroking kits in their in their um, lower powered rifles, albeit in 26 millimeter piston guns. The specific kits to reduce to six foot pounds. I am toying with the idea of of actually having them on the shelf ready to go at a moment's notice. They are available to order, so if you contact me, we can put one together for you. But if enough people want them for for various rifles and we will actually start putting them up on the website as an option which can be just sent out same day as the order um, and that's it 
If you have any questions, please e email me. Uh, take a look around the website at the other videos and uh, subscribe to the channel. Thank you very much for watching and goodbye.